Manage Care in Integrated Systems by Professor Tammy. Manage Care in Integrated Systems, Part 2. Utilization Control Methods and Managed Care. MCOs, managed care organizations, use three main types of controls. Expert evaluation of what services are medically necessary. What do you need medically? Determination of how services can be provided more inexpensively versus can you get this service in um, outpatient? That means you don't have to stay overnight versus staying overnight, which is called inpatient. Because if you stay as an inpatient person overnight in the hospital, like in the hospital bed, it will cost more than if you're an outpatient um, patient who just goes into the hospital, get your checkup, see the doctor, and then leave. Gatekeeping and utilization review. Utilization control methods and managed care. Gatekeeping. A primary care physician, PCP, coordinates all health services needed by an enrollee. That means you. It emphasizes preventive care, routine physical examination, and other primary care services. Higher levels of services are obtained on the basis of referral from the PCP. Utilization review, the process of evaluating the appropriateness of services provided. Three types of utilization review. We will go over them in the next slides, but they are prospective utilization review, concurrent utilization review, and retrospective utilization review. Prospective utilization review. The medical necessity for certain treatments is determined before the care is delivered, so they know what's going to happen and how much it will cost. For example, pre-certification. The main objective is to prevent unnecessary and inappropriate institutionalization of treatments such as surgery. So if you're going to have, let's just say, a surgery like C-section, that's when um, the baby needs um, to come out through, you know, in cutting the mom's um, lower abdomen. So this also is a common practice. So the insurance company would know, like, okay, how many doctors are needed? What materials are needed? And how long would it pretty much take for the C-section? So they can kind of estimate how much um, they are going to pay the hospital, the doctors, for this service that the doctor and hospital is providing to you, the patient. Concurrent utilization review. Appropriateness is determined during the course of healthcare utilization. For example, monitoring the length of inpatient stays. Discharge planning and concurrent review go hand in hand. So you're like, all right, let's see how the patient is doing. We'll watch the patient um, as they're in the hospital. And we'll see how the patient is feeling before we discharge them. Retrospective utilization review. Managing utilization after services have already been delivered based on an examination of medical records to assess the appropriateness of care. Overutilization or underutilization are examined. So this is kind of a little different from the prospective one. Retrospective um, is you have the service already. So they're going to examine how much service was used and they will look at how much they would need to pay for the hospital. So a lot of times in a lot of hospitals, they use the prospective utilization review because they have an idea how much things will cost. And also if the population is more vast, they have a good idea like how much 
um, services the health care provider in the hospital is serving versus if you live in rural America they tend to use the retrospective utilization review the reason is if they don't these rural hospitals or health care centers would not survive so the way they look at their finances is going to be different than probably most um, mega cities or cities or towns Three factors are critical in differentiating between the types of MCOs, managed care organizations. One, the choice of providers. Who are you going to have as your doctor or provider? Who's going to take care of you? Two, different ways of arranging services. Three, payment and risk sharing. HMOs, health maintenance organization. There's the staff model. There's the group model, there's the network model, and also the Independent Practice Association IPA model. PPOs are preferred provider organization. POS plans are point of service. Types of managed care plans, HMOs. The first type of managed care plans to appear on the market. There are four common HMO, health maintenance organization models. They differ according to the arrangement made with participating physicians. Like we mentioned, the staff model, the group model, the network model, and the independent practice association model. Staff model is the least popular type of HMO. The staff model HMO employs is owned fixed salary physicians. So you get a certain salary, it doesn't matter if you have more patients or less. At the end of the year, a pool of money is distributed among the physicians in the form of bonuses based on each physician's productivity and the HMO's profitability. It's like getting a bonus at the end, depending how well you work at the end and how much money your business makes. In this case, it's the HMO. Exercises greater control over practice pattern and can be better monitor utilization. Continues to de decline because of high operating expenses and limited choice of providers. So it's starting to be less popular. Group model. Contracts with a multi-speciality group practice and separately with one or more hospitals to provide comprehensive services to its members. Physicians are employed by the practice, not the HMO. The HMO Health Maintenance Organization pays an all-inclusive capitation fee to the practice to provide physician services to its employees. Network model. The HMO contracts with more than one medical group practice. It is adaptable to large metropolitan areas like New York City and widespread geographic regions. Group practices are responsible for providing all physician services, it is able to offer more choice. The disadvantage is there is a delusion of utilization control. IPA, Independent Practice Association model, has been the most successful in terms of enrollment. The IPA establishes contracts with solo and group practices, so like doctors who work by themselves or doctors who work with other doctors as well. The IPA functions as an intermediary re representing many physicians. The disadvantage is if a contract is lost, the HMO loses a large percentage of participating physicians. PPOs, Preferred Provider Organization. Instead of a capitation, PPOs may discount fee arrangements with providers. Discount ranges between 25 to 35% of providers' regular fee. It's like a sell discount when you think about it. 
POS point of service plans. Combine features of HMOs with patient choice found in PPOs. Overcome restricted provider choice but retain the benefits of tight utilization. Free choice of providers is a major selling point. POS enrollment peaked in 1998 through 1999 and has declined due to high out-of-pocket costs. Impact on costs, access, and quality. Influence on cost contamination. In the United States, the primary responsibility for cost contamination falls on the private sector. In other nations, governments control costs by limiting services and payments to providers. Managed care successfully controlled costs during the 1990s, but the backlash diluted this potential. MA, the Medicare Advantage plans have been shown to offer high value. Not the same experience with Medicaid managed care plans. Impact on access. Managed care enrollees usually have good access to primary care, preventive services, health screenings, and health promotion activities. HMO, health maintenance organization, enrollees experience fewer disparities in access and utilization. Increased probability of emergency department use and difficulty seeing specialists in Medicaid managed care. Influence of quality of care. Comprehensive studies have shown roughly equal quality of care in HMO and non-HMO plans. Quality has actually improved over time. Financial pressures under capitation do not lead to significant changes in physician behavior. Race, ethnicity, and social economic status have little or no effect on quality under managed care. The exceptions are satisfaction ratings in HMO plans, for-profit versus non-profit MCOs, managed care organizations, and quality not consistent in all MCO plans. See you soon, and remember to read the book.